Hi everyone, today we'll walk through how you can set up a NetSuite connection in Mercado. Now in NetSuite, there are five steps that we'll walk through in order to create that secure connection with the right permissions to Mercado. First, you have to enable web services and token-based authentication. Second, you'll create an integration record. Third, you'll create an integration role with the right permissions. Fourth, you'll set up an integration user and finally, the last step, you'll create an access token. So before building your NetSuite connection, you want to make sure you have three things in order before you start. First, you want to ensure that your Workado role is able to create a connection. Second, you want to ensure that you have someone with an admin account or you yourself have an admin account to make these changes in NetSuite. And finally, it's very important that you understand the permissions and requirements to create the desired workflow automation. So let's jump in. In order to make all the required settings changes and permissions, you need to have admin access. So it's best practice to work with the NetSuite admin or have the NetSuite admin themselves create these permissions so they know the relationships between the objects and the fields within NetSuite and your NetSuite instance. So the first step is to enable web services and token-based authentication. So to start, go to Setup, then Company, and click on Enable Features. And then go to the tab for Suite Cloud. If you scroll down to Suite Script, you want to make sure that the Client Suite Script and the Server Suite Script are both enabled. Then if we scroll down a little bit further to Suite Talk Web Services, make sure that SOAP Web Services and REST Web Services are both enabled as well. Then to enable the token-based authentication, go to Manage Authentication and enable token-based authentication and OAuth 2.0. And then once all of those are enabled, you can scroll back up and save. Next, we'll create an integration record. An integration record is essentially creating a record for an app or a platform or tool that you want to identify NetSuite to integrate with. So to do this, we can go to Setup, Integration, then Manage Integrations, and we'll click New. From here, we'll give it a meaningful name. In this case, since we're connecting to Workado, I'll name this integration record Workado. Next, you want to ensure that you can see to the right that the state is enabled. Then scrolling below in Authentication, make sure to check that token-based authentication is enabled. And make sure to deselect authorization flow and authorization code grant under the OAuth 2.0 section. And once that's complete, you can click save and your integration record should be saved. Now, when you create this integration record, NetSuite will provide you with a consumer key slash client ID and a consumer secret slash client secret. Make sure you copy and store these somewhere safe because you won't have access to these codes again, and you will require them when you are setting up the Workado connection in Workado. Now in step three, we'll be creating an integration role. Now creating an integration role is likely the most important part of creating the NetSuite connection because within the role is where you enable the different permissions and restrictions that this connection will have. So to start, we'll go back to setup, we'll go to manage roles, and then we'll click New Role. In this form, we'll give it a meaningful name, such as Integration Role, or you can call it Workado Integration Role, something that makes sense to your organization. And down below, you can select how you want this particular role to interact with subsidiaries. For example, I'm allowing access to all subsidiaries, as well as allowing cross-subsidiary record viewing. Now, under Authentication, this is optional. You can click to set this as a Web Services Only Role, which basically means that you won't be able to log in as this particular role. You will only be able to interact with the APIs. Now underneath authentication, we'll set up the permissions. And this is the most important step as it will determine to what level Workado and other applications can interact with NetSuite. So underneath each of these tabs, like transactions, you can search and select the items or elements you want this role and Workado to be able to interact with. In this case, I'm selecting a sales order and a purchase order for transactions. And to the right, you'll notice that it's by default view only. 
So depending on the level of interaction you want. So I can actually change the level by clicking into the text. Uh, I can give read write permissions, create, edit, or full permissions. And now back on the left, notice how I've selected the purchase order and sales order. Now for both of these transactions, it's important to note that there are lists and fields that are built within these transactions. So if we just take a look at sales orders, we can see that on the form we require the customer, custom forms, and items in order to fully access the sales order. So it's important to grant access to those lists, forms, and fields so that you're fully able to interact with the sales order in this instance. Now when I provide access to these different transactions like the sales order and purchase order and the lists such as items, customers, and vendors, Workado can now access the different customers within NetSuite or the different sales order transactions from our instance. So for transactions, reports, and lists, it's very important to understand the dependencies between each of those so you don't run into any problems accessing each of those elements. Now finally, while creating the role, if we scroll down to setup, there's certain permissions we need to allow. Namely, we need to allow logging in using access tokens, allowing REST web services, SOAP web services, setup company, suite script, user access tokens, setup SOAP web services, and any custom fields and forms that may be referenced by transactions, reports, and lists. And make sure that these have full level access because this is what allows NetSuite to connect with Ricardo. So once that's complete, we can go up and save the role. Now that we've created the integration role, we'll need to create an integration user. So we can go to Setup, Manage Users and Roles, and then select Manage Users. Now you can choose to edit an existing user, or you can create one. And it's important that the user is an employee so they have access to all the transactions, reports, and fields within NetSuite. So within this form, you'll give the user a meaningful name, provide them with an email address, select the subsidiary they're a part of, and down below under the Access tab, make sure to tick Give Access, and, and underneath that same Access tab, for roles, assign the integration role you just created. So in this case, it's the integration role that we just made. Now finally, for the last step, step five, we'll create an access token. So we'll go to Setup, then we'll go to Users and Roles, we'll select Access Tokens, and select New. And from here, we'll fill out the fields. So for the application name, it's simply the integration record we just created. So in this case, it's Workado. For the user, we select the user we just created, which is the Workado integration user. And for the role, we can fill out integration role, which we also just created. Once that's done, we can click Save. And once you click Save, NetSuite will create a token ID and token secret. So make sure to copy and store that information appropriately because we'll need it in order to authenticate NetSuite with Workado. So now once you've created an access token, we can jump back into Workado and create the connection. So when creating a connection, give it a meaningful name. You'll need the account ID, which you can find in NetSuite by going to Setup, Integrations, and SOAP Web Service Preferences. So you can grab that and paste it in. And if you've been following along with all the steps, you can fill out all the other information, the consumer key, consumer secret, token ID, and token secret, and paste those in. And finally, down below, you can select the time zone in which your NetSuite instance operates, and you can click Connect. And if all of that information is correct, you'll now have a secure connection to Workado, and you'll be able to connect with thousands of other applications. So when building recipes, you can access the different fields and objects, create triggers or events to track, and now you can get started creating automations with NetSuite and all your favorite apps. To learn more, you can visit our docs at docs.workado.com. I hope this helps, and as always, thank you for watching.